This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Of all the presentations that we've learned so far, this is going to be by far the most colorful. And I was saving this for Portugal. This is one of the most unusual, exciting, um, colorful situations that ever unfolded in Jewish history. Let's just paint the background. So here it is, Portugal, 1496, expulsion from Portugal. In 1504, pogroms erupted. 1506 is a year of dreadful plague in Portugal. Thousands of conversos were slain in a continuing series of pogroms, the worst occurring here in Lisbon. It became so bad that Emmanuel actually, because there was so much uh, un- instability, he allowed conversos to leave the country. That changed later on, but I'm just telling you what the backdrop of the story is. So, onto the scene of this woeful, unstable situation steps one of the most mysterious characters in Jewish history. Charlatan, madman, genius, scholar, believer, defender, opportunist, hero, villain, among other wonderful qualities. He's all one and the same. And his effect on Sephardic Jewry and the world was apocaly- uh, apolo- apocalyptic. apocalyptic. Thank you. So he's a, 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 a swarthy Jew. He's dressed like an Arab. He appears in 1523 in Egypt. He identifies himself as a member of the tribe of Reuven, exiled by King Sancherev. He comes from the other side of the Sambat Yon liver, River. He claims to have letters and credentials to be from the Jewish king of the Asaras Hashvatim. And he has come to meet with the Pope for a secret venture. What's the secret venture? He's going to join forces as the king of the Asaras Hashvatim. He's going to join forces with the Pope to free the land of Israel, where the land of Israel would become a Jewish state. So the Pope, what's in it for the Pope? What's in it for the Pope was the Pope would get control of all Christian holy places and the trade routes. And in exchange for that, Israel would become a Jewish state so that the conversos have a safe haven. He did not make any messianic claims, but to claim that you're the king of the Asas Hashvatim and you're going to free the Holy Land, it cannot be separated from a messianic claim. So in 1524, he comes to Jerusalem. He claims to have performed great miracles on the Temple Mount, that he extracted a rock from under the Kodesh HaKadoshim. He then comes to Venice and he asks audience to meet with the Pope. He arrives there dressed as an Arabian sheik. He's riding a white horse, carrying a banner that he's the king of the Aser Sashvatim. And we've had some interesting... Meetings so far, you know, Rabbi Vadya Yosef meet, meets King Juan Carlos. Menashe ben Israel meets Oliver. Oliver Cromwell. But this is by far the most unlikely audience in history. Pope Clement VII meets David Haruveni. And he approves of the plan to free Jerusalem and Israel from the Muslim infidels. But on one condition. He said this is only going to work. The only way we can access the Christian army is we have to settle the long-standing feud between the German army, excuse me, between the German emperor and the French king. And the only one who could broker that deal is the king of Portugal. So in 1525, David Ruveni, with a letter from the Pope, gains audience with the king of Portugal who agrees to broker a deal between the Emperor of Germany and the French King. Now David Haruveni is officially the ambassador of the King of Portugal. So now David Haruveni, as the ambassador of the King of Portugal, he's very confident in his position, so he feels he can openly flaunt his Jewishness. He starts teaching Torah to the conversos who come out of the woodwork. He takes a Muslim maidservant. He publicly converts her to Judaism. And now he makes it known to the Abarbanel's family who's hiding in Lisbon as conversos to come out and to proclaim their allegiance to Torah Judaism. 
the drama reaches its climax when another mysterious person enters the picture. His name is Dr. Diego Perez. He's a, cons- uh, a descendant of a Converso family, child prodigy, and he's 20 years. He's a poet, a writer, orator, a linguist, scholar, very spiritual, and he doesn't find any solace in his soul with Christianity. So he starts to search for his Jewish roots. He learned Hebrew. He taught himself Talmud and Kabbalah. He comes to David Huruveni and he tells him about his visions and his dreams. David cautions him about any rash acts. Diego publicly circumcises himself literally with his own hand. He changed his name. His name is now Shlomo Malcho. And he begins to teach Torah. The Inquisition comes to the king. He's a king. There's you can't... Inquisition. What? 15, 1536. The Inquisition demanded the king take action against Shlomo and David. And the king ordered David to either convert or leave. David Haruveni leaves to Italy. Shlomo follows him there. Now Shlomo's having all kinds of visions of the imminent, uh, the imminent messianic deliverance. Now in some of the, um, Shlomo's dreams, Shlomo was the Messiah. In some of his dreams, David was the Messiah. In other dreams, they were both the Messiah. All of a sudden, there are floods, wars, earthquakes, racking Europe in 1532. If it, Europe is shaken, is stirred by the Messianic fervor. David and Shlomo now traveled to Germany to enlist the Emperor of Germany's aid to support the war against the Muslims in, in Israel. The Emperor is not impressed. He took, takes David... David is arrested and he burns Shlomo Molchai at the stake. Shlomo Molchai is now held up as the paragon of someone who dies al Kiddush Hashem. In fact, if you look in the Magad Meisharim, the angel that came to learn with the Beis Yosef promised him because the Beis Yosef wanted to die al Kiddush Hashem like Shlomo Molchai. And the angel promised the Beis Yosef that indeed he would also die al Kiddush Hashem like Shlomo Mocho. One of the biggest questions on the Magad Meisharim is that the Beis Yosef never died al Kiddush Hashem like the angel promised him. Basically, Shlomo Mocho's life was very much uh, romanticized, but later on in history, he was more considered a false messiah. David Haruveni disappears. Nobody knows what happened to him. Some say he died in jail in 1535. But the death of Shlomo Mocha and the disappearance of David Haruveni was sort of the beginning of the end of any type of converso community here in Portugal. So until then there were communities of conversos. There were no longer any uh, communities of conversos. So you had some individuals who continued to hold on to Jewish practice, but the converso communities as entities disappear in the 16th century. That was the end of then. The, the end of this messianic fervor really put an end to any type of uh, converso community here on the Iberian Peninsula. But you see why at the time the atmosphere was fertile, where the Jews were looking for some type of salvation, some type of deliverance, and uh, Unfortunately, this put an end to any kind of uh, community entity of observance here on the Iberian Peninsula. So this is the amazing story of David Haruveni and Shlomo Mocha. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.